Listen to me. There are a lot of small penises in this world. Most men have small. Listen, I don't know if men know this. I think listen, you, I think I'm, I'm not clear. done. I'm not done. Men need to hear this. Most of y'all, listen, what camera am I looking? Most of y'all have small pe- Most, most, most of y'all uh-huh. have small penises. Yeah. Welcome to 2190's podcast, Asking for a Friend. I'm your host, Elizabeth Overson, New York Times bestselling author, relationship columnist, and self-love strategist. I'm here, as always, with my engineer, Alex. Hey, Alex. What's up? Alex, I keep looking at your feet. Thank you. You got pretty feet. We were all right. <laughs> Last week you said they were sweaty or something like that. They're glistening. glistening. They're moist. Moist. Feet. You have moist <laughs> glistening. I thought you lotioned them, but you didn't. But nah. it's all good. They're actually really nice feet. I like the new hairdo. New you. I this like is a it. new. <laughs> <laughs> new episode. Who this? Yes, exactly. So Thank you. for today, do you know who's still going strong? Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan. I'm surprised. Really? Yeah. Because she was kind of moving around a lot. Was she? Yeah. You mean she was just having a healthy dating life? Like most men would? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. She was. That part? Very healthy. Yeah. Very healthy. Extra healthy. Was it extra or was it regular healthy? It was. (laughs) Was it just like. I'll put an answer this the right way. She was having a healthy relationship. With everybody she wanted to. Yes. And I just thought Michael B. Jordan was going to be another person that was a healthy body that she encountered <laughs> Alex you're you should stop talking I am all right. <laughs> you should stop talking about this no I know but I know what you're saying you're saying yeah. that um yeah there was a period of time for um she's beautiful by the way oh gorgeous Lori Harvey's Oof. gorgeous Oof. right there was a period of time where she was actively and publicly dating um I don't know I think just a healthy strong healthy dating life mm-hmm um and i happen to have a short list of the healthy yes dating which i was surprised to see a couple of names on this list really Uh uh-huh okay um i'm gonna tell you the ones that surprised me yeah so just so just for reference i know a few but let's see okay if i know so just for reference um there was we know future i think that was pretty obvious yep um and then there was boo who is um akon's brother oh yeah. Um, Is he also helping him build Lights in Africa? Or, yeah. Probably. Okay. Boo and Akon work very closely together. He took some time I have a whole, never mind. We ain't going to go into what I have about that. I'm just going <laughs> to leave that. That's another show, child. Another um, right. Stop it. I got Listen. For that. Let's, let's get into slut shaming because I can't, I can't with you today. <laughs> All right. It's the stigmatization of a woman. So let me stop it. Is it sta- is stigmatizing a woman for engaging in behavior judged to be as promiscuous or sexually provocative? Okay. And I I left the part where it says a woman because let's be listen, if you look up in the dictionary any of these words, slut, whore, tramp, strumpet, every dictionary, every definition in the dictionary starts with a woman who. A woman, a woman, a woman. Mm. It very rarely uh says a person or a man or a woman who mm. these are terms that are that are strictly for women you guys don't have these mm. they're not made for you don't don't do that i mean don't do that we get called f boy and that's what the same as a whore does it hit you does it hit you the same no nah, it's definitely not the same it's not the same it's not. and the whole world doesn't do this to you and you're not judged by it and then you're li- having your life ruined by it. Mm. Your work ruined by it. That's all. Your personal relationships ruined by it. It's not the same. You guys don't have the whole world judging and telling you what to do with your body. Mm. We literally have the government telling us what to do with our bodies. The government. Yeah. Somebody somewhere right now is changing a law. That tells us what we need to do with our bodies, when and how we can get birth control, when and how we can should even be able to get abortions or even just care, Mm -hmm. even just care. And then also when and how we should have sex and not have sex. The problem with slut shaming is this. Slut shaming is born in the insecurities of men and your insecurities are born in your penises and your wallet size. Mm. Because honestly, and I'm going to be super frank here, I never heard a big dick man with not just big dick energy, 
not just BDE, mm -hmm. but a man who's well endowed. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a well endowed man call a woman a whore. Mm. Okay. It's always the man who can't who can't handle a sexually advanced woman in the bedroom. Okay. Listen, I have some thoughts about slut shaming, obviously. <laughs> We're here to hear it. I got some thoughts about it. All right. Because I'm super passionate about this issue, obviously. Um, I think women's sexual rights and just rights in general, um, it, it always strikes a nerve with me. Mm. And also, y'all men just drive me nuts. Not all of us. All of y'all drive me crazy. Well, all right. So, but before I get into all of that. Okay. Uh, back to Lori Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> you, I'm about to get on a tangent right now. <laughs> Lori Harvey, I would say like if Lori Harvey was a friend in my head, if she was my friend and she is a friend in my head, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I were to give Lori Harvey some advice. First of all, I have no advice for her. I have zero advice for Lori Harvey. Really? Yes. I think Lori Harvey is probably the first person that I've talked about on the show that I have no advice for. Okay. Because I feel like Lori Harvey did everything right. Lori Harvey kissed a bunch of frogs. <laughs> and it's not her oh. fault that none of them were good enough. That's oh, their fault. Wow. Okay. If you were a big enough man in more ways than one, you might have been able to keep her. But you weren't good enough. Wow. You weren't big enough. You weren't man enough. You weren't something enough for her based on her standards, most likely. Wow. And she moved on. And we can't stigmatize women moving on. Y'all want us to settle for less so bad. And when a woman doesn't settle for less and she knows when to zip, you know, zip and zap and dip and dive, you're like, oh, she's a slut because you're not good enough for her. Mm. Now she belongs to the streets. And it's always the men with 17 kids talking about you belong to the streets. Bro, you are the streets. You are the dirty, nasty, rat infested. You're a rat carrying a pizza on a subway in New York. Nigga, you are the streets. <laughs> but because you couldn't, you're not enough for her. And then she ends up with Michael B. Jordan. This is a good one. Who is a beautiful man inside and out, I'm sure. <laughs> and obviously he can hold her attention. This is what I always say. It's not the first. Remember when Ray J was like, I hit it first. Like, yeah. it, ain't, it ain't cute to be the first. That's not the cute one. Mm. It's the last. Who's good enough to be the last? Mm. The first is easy. I'm experimenting, bro. Of course you were the first. I don't know what I'm doing. You don't know. It's fine. But if I'm an experienced woman who has done my sexual due diligence, who has dated and dated and, and kissed all the frogs, and then you are the prince and you get to be the last one, you're the one who lets me see that I don't want any of that. And I'm going to stay right here. Like you're, you're it. It's not who's first. It's who's last. Mm. So I don't care how many frogs she had to kiss to get to her prince or her king. It's who is best who keeps my attention. So I don't have to dump you and move on to somebody else. Wow. Listen, friend in my head. No advice for this girl. Okay. This girl, she did it right. I do. I love me some Lori Harvey, by the way. Yeah. I love me some Lori me Harvey. Me too. Right? Shut up. What? You can't say it. Only Why? I can say it. Because when you say it, it sounds creepy. But I have the same admiration you have. No, her. you don't. You got a different admiration. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, I just want to say, okay, so let's get off of that. Yeah, okay. Um. Slut shaming. So I have a lot. I have a lot to say about it, obviously. Mm. I have a lot of experience with it. And my earliest experience with slut shaming actually comes from my mother. From the time I was, I think, like 11 oh, wow. or so. Okay. Because slut shaming a lot of times has nothing to do with sex. It, has, it didn't have anything to do with my sex. I was 11. Sometimes it comes from other people's hangups about sex. And their experiences with it... Um, their bad experiences, their own slut shaming histories. And I learned from a very early age. The first time I was called a whore, I was just 11 years old playing with boys, playing jacks with boys on the playground. Wow. That's all I had to do was be a girl in a circle of boys playing jacks on the playground. Mm. So that was a fire game, by the way. Yo, Jax? Yeah. Yo, I could kick your ass in some Jax, bro. I mean, get it right now. Like, I'm, <laughs> like I'm somebody good. Somebody Amazon yeah, me some yeah. Jax. <laughs> but it could be something as simple as that. Hmm. So I'm going to talk about that a little later um, and kind of get into my history with slut shaming, how I've been able to um, withstand and kind of traverse that, that whole thing. A lot of it is just 
It's so asinine and so stupid. Um, but before we go into all of that, mm -hmm. I want to get to our callers and see what they have to say. Cool. Yeah. I'll bring some of our friends on the line. Yay. Okay. So we have our friend Gotham Gem on the line. She has a question about slut shaming. Gotham Gem, are you there? I'm here. And what's your question for Elizabeth? So my question is, what do you do when a guy you just met makes creepy statements that slut shames women and attempts to rationalize them being raped? Do you patiently educate him or quickly escape the red flags? Good question. Uh, I have a question for you. Are you oh. a professor of some sort? I am not. Okay, so I'm we're just not educating men for free. We're done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like we're done. We just met him. We don't know him. We are not professional educators. We don't have, do you have time? Cause I don't have time. Not at all. Okay. And we don't have time. We're done. It's not your job. And I think it's important yeah. for us to, especially as we meet men and get, start getting to know men that we realize that men are not our job. And it's not our job to raise them, to teach them, to change them, to better them in any way. It's not your job. You just met him. So he's literally not even a part of your life at all. And he can't be right. a part of your life because he's got some probably very antiquated ways at, at, at looking at uh, of looking at sex, sexuality with women. So he can't be part of your life. Right. Correct. Yeah. We went on one date and a couple of days later, we were having a conversation about women being pressured to do things sexually. He proceeds to say, if a woman allows a man to give her head, but she doesn't let him hit, she deserves what she gets. What? So, First yes. of all, arrest this man. Mm -hmm. like, like, sir, you are under arrest. Like, what do you mean? It's crazy. Um, yeah. Red flag. Uh, I believe exactly. in a, a, like a one flag rule. Mm. Mm. Uh, I haven't always followed this rule. And whenever I haven't followed <laughs> this rule, I've always regretted it. Always. When I have followed this rule, I've never regretted it. One red flag, one flag on the play, game is over, we're done. In flag football, they got like two flags on the side. This ain't football, not... <laughs> okay? <laughs> My eggs are drying up as we speak. Mm. We don't have time. Mm. One flag on the play, okay? This is your flag, okay. the game is over. Throw him back to the streets where he belongs. Agreed? Done and done. Agreed. Thank you. You're very welcome. Tell him I said, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> he is blocked and gone. Gone Bye. forever. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We have our friend Jennifer on the line. Jennifer, are you here? Yes. Okay. And what's your question for Elizabeth? How can I jump back into the dating scene and live my best life without slut shaming from my female friends? What? Okay. So... Jennifer, let's talk about this. The first half of your sentence is all about you. How can you jump into dating? And then the second part is all about other people without slut shaming from your female friends. First of all, your friends have nothing to do with your dating life. Your friends have nothing to do with your life at all, really. They only intersect where you want them to you are a singular individual. You're not your friends. You're not what they think you should do. You're not what people, anybody, not just your friends, your friends, your family, society, anybody else. Do what's always, always, always do what's best for you. Never, ever, ever do what's best for other people. If you're jumping back into anything, including the dating scene, date however you want, have as much sex as you want, have no sex if you don't want to, Date, I'll just, I'm just going to say this to you though, you should date multiples. I'm going to always preach this. I'm going to always preach not putting all your eggs in one basket, dating multiple men at one time, very old fashioned, very Regency era, very dance card. You're going to always want to do that. Doesn't mean you're having sex with all of them. Doesn't mean you're not having sex with all of them. Completely up to you. None of my business, that's for sure. And it's certainly not your friend's business at all. Right. I agree. Well, thank you so much for that you're welcome okay have your friends ever been like alex you're having too much sex stop it right away <laughs> <laughs> alex this is the third girl you went out with in three months 
you're a whore. Like, has anybody ever had this conversation with you? Nah. I These can't are conversations say, yeah. that only women get. Yeah, it's usually the opposite. It's like, it's like, yo, you went out with her. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Celebrate it. You bagged her sister, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> no one's mad. No one's. No one's even like, like, yo, Alex, we got to talk. Mm. Uh, you know, I've been meaning to say this to you for a long. Like, and nobody has this. I hate that women even that this is even a question in women's minds. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I handle dating and what people are going to say about me dating? Yeah. Fuck everybody. Um, and fuck everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Elizabeth. Yes. We have our friend, Miss Lyons, on the line. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Miss Lyons. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing wonderful today. What's your question? So I'm curious. I really want to know. So this slut shaming, what would you say it's more about? Do you think it's more of a control thing or would you say it's an insecurity thing? I mean, I'm just curious because or is it a matter of both? OK, so I'm about to give you the math mm. on slut shaming. Ready? All right. Yeah. I'm listening. All right. So when a woman does her sexual due diligence, she gains her sexual education. She now has a better uh, grading curve with which to discern. When a woman is able to discern better, she's able to make more acute decisions, which means that a lot of men are going to be rejected because now she's seen more penises. She's seen small ones, large ones, fat ones, skinny ones. She's seen brown ones, yellow ones, black ones, all white right, ones, right. pink ones. It, well, I'm not it. done. <laughs> she's seen, she's seen <laughs> circumcised, uncircumcised. She's seen low hanging balls. She's seen high hanging balls. She's seen hairy ones. Okay. All right. So she's seen all the penises, okay. right? She's seen all of them. But now what she has is this grading curve. She has this discernment. Educated women are able to make more educated decisions. Hmm. When women are able to make more educated decisions, more men get rejected. It's that rejection that the male ego cannot stand, which is why there are incels in the world who are beating, raping, murdering, and deforming women <clears throat> because they're being rejected. The male ego is dangerous. And it cannot handle rejection. So therefore, ergo, if a woman is shamed, sexually shamed, it makes her not want to exercise her right to gain the same sexual education that men get. It allows her, without that education, she's not able to better discern. Hmm. Which means that if she's only seen one penis, because now this is, where, this is where the fascination with virgins comes from. A virgin, a woman who hasn't been around either or, she hasn't seen probably any penises, maybe just one or two. She hasn't been down to Miami during spring break or to hedonism in Jamaica and seen that penises get pretty big <laughs> and awesome, right? She hasn't tried out a bunch of penises. She's a virgin or she's very inexperienced. Men like or say small because then a man who is inept and to be honest, most men are inept. OK, the average penis size is only six inches. That's not a lot of penis. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm giving it I'm giving it to you guys. Really? Like, listen, no chaser here. Six inches is not a lot of penis. Okay. There's men out here with eight, nine, 10, 12 inches. OK, mm -hmm. and more. I've seen more, more. Okay. <laughs> I've seen a lot more. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get into it. I've seen, oh, so I've seen some things. Okay. Okay. Some things. So I'm, I, I'm All curious. Right? I'm curious. Listen. Can I ask a question? Wait, not yet. Let me finish. <laughs> let me finish my sermon. Okay. Okay. We in church. So now, <laughs> when men shame women because of those insecurities, that makes women not want to have that the sex that they really want. It makes them afraid to have the sex that they want to have. That shame is meant to make men feel better. So now it's like, well, I don't want to, you know, I would have sex. I would have more sex, but they're going to call me a whore. So I'm not going to do it. So I'm just going to settle for this little penis man that I met one time. And now I'm having horrible sex the rest of my life so that I don't hurt his ego. Mm. The men with the, sm with the smaller inadequate penis, and there's a lot of small penises in this world. <laughs> listen, to there are a lot of small penises in this world. Most men have small, listen, I don't know if men know this. I 
think Listen, you, I think I'm, you, not, it's I'm not clear. done. I'm not done. Men need to hear this. Most of y'all, listen, what camera am I looking? Most of y'all have small pe- most 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 of y'all have small penises. You've seen porn. You know how big they get. They get pretty big. And once a woman figures, once a woman figures that out, she ain't going back to six inches or five or four. Some of them are like a cool inch. I was married to a man who had a cool inch and a half. I know because I measured it. Trust me. <laughs> it's not good. We are fed up. I see. We are tired of small penises. I'm sorry. I'm going off on a tangent, girl. You, I just, oh, okay. Let me bring it back down because I am rallying. <laughs> this is a rally cry. I am crying out for all of us women who deserve more orgasms. We deserve nice, that, like, like beautiful fatties. We deserve, okay, okay. we deserve better penis. Listen, don't try to stop me, Alex, because you are comfortable. No. My girl on the line knows what I'm question. talking about. I don't, listen. <laughs> I'm answering her question. She's over there laughing. Trust me. My girl is laughing with me. She um, she feels it. She understands because she she's seen some small ones. She's like, girl, yes. If she was here, she'll be high-fiving me right now. <laughs> We're tired of your small penises. <laughs> We're tired. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> does that answer your question? It does, but I, I I'm just curious. I I was thinking that it also could have been depending on the man, um, a control thing that as a woman you may not have you may not even be a slut, but uh, they basically uh, will present you in that light just to control you to to make sure you stay in line. Well, to make sure that and you I'll- settle for their tiny penis, yeah. It's all it's all. Well, yeah. Listen, and sluts aren't a real thing. <laughs> sluts are not a real thing. No one's a slut. No one's real, like sluts are like unicorns. People talk about them all the time, but you've never seen one. Nobody's a slut because there's nobody out here having more sex than anybody else because a man has to have sex if he's a straight man with a woman. A woman is having sex with a man. If we're both having sex at the same time, how am I the slut? Knock it off. That's a fact. Right? Mm -hmm. That's insane. So Well, you know, some of these men are running around around here talking about, um, well, you're not a virgin and you done been doing all this stuff with all these other men and then you expect you expect the, the world from me. And I'm like, but what difference does it make if the person is not a virgin or and not? And he's not a virgin either. And he no, he's not. a bunch from you. And his mama ain't a virgin. And everybody's mom, especially single moms, there was always an uncle that nobody ever seen before that came up on Christmas morning and all of a sudden you had all these gifts and a new uncle. People don't even think about all the, all the dicks there because you, you're laughing because you had, you had an uncle you didn't know about. Like, who was this uncle Troy all of a sudden? Because your mom was having sex, bro. Yes. Your mom was doing all the things. All the things. You don't want to think about it. I don't. But she was. Listen. Pay no attention. Pay these men no mind. Have all the sex you want. Have all the sex you don't want to have. I don't care. And it's none of their freaking business. It doesn't matter. None of this shit matters. It's all about ego. It's all about ego. And them not wanting to be rejected. That sexual education allows you to see and to know what's out there for you. And when you know what's out there for you, you choose better. Because trust me, I've seen penises and been like, in the moment, be like, nah, nah, I'm good. Thank you, though. Mm. Now I make them send me penis pics ahead of time. <laughs> like, just send me a picture of your penis, bro. I'm celibate, but I still want to see it. <laughs> and if it's tiny, I don't even want to talk to you. Because this isn't going to go anywhere, ever. Friend zone, automatically. Got it. <laughs> Eight inches or less, friend zone. Not even interested. Uh, thank you for your question. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> I feel like our girl got a whole lot more than she bargained for today. She did. But I'm telling you, this penis thing, listen, every time a man says something slick about a woman, I know he has a small penis. Yeah. I've seen some of the, I've seen, I think I've seen the largest penis in the world. Okay. No, I'm serious. I think I've seen the largest penis in the world. How? Oh man! And it's not someone I've been with. My really good axes. How big was it? It was it was as big as my arm. No, 
Yeah, it was as long as my arm. No, stop it. That's impossible. No, it's not. He's over seven. He's in. The, he was in the NBA. This is something I've talked about publicly. Him and I have discussed it publicly. Yo, your arms like. Yeah, it's it was as long as my arm from my wrist to my shoulder. Okay, and it was this. It was so much around that my fingers couldn't touch. Okay, all right. So okay. we we have a social question. Okay, listen, I'm sh- <laughs> listen. I'm just telling you, I've seen the King Kong of penises. All right, I think. We got the point. It was really big. <laughs> it was big. All right. <laughs> but we should. I, I, we have a question from social. Fine. I'll read it out. This is from Gina Thomas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. So <laughs> why do some men hate on sluts when deep down that's what they want? See, I'm writing a whole book about this. It's called Men Love Sluts. Listen to this. Okay. So the thing about patriarchal values is that they... It, in an attempt to hinder women, they also hinder men. Mm. Okay. So you take the scenario from before the sexual due diligence into the better discernment into choosing, which, which means let's leaves a lot of men being dissed. I mean, they just end up getting rejected. Mm. Men don't want that. So they shame women. So women don't go out and branch out and find out that there's better out there. Right. Mm. It's kind of like when you like chain a woman in the basement, like you just kind of keep her closed out to the world. So she doesn't see this better penises out there, better men, better everything. Okay, cool. The problem with that is that now men will look for the virginal and they'll look for the like inexperienced and virginal women. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're looking for, you know, the quintessential or stereotypical uh, like church marm kind of a girl. Like she's a good girl. Right. Mm -hmm. Quote unquote, big air quotes on that. So let's say now his name is Sam. Sam gets the good girl. She hasn't been with anybody. She's waiting until marriage. So he marries her. The problem is Sam has not been waiting. Sam has been since high school sowing his wild oats. Now he knows what he likes sexually. He's into some pretty freaky stuff. Okay. Okay. Sam likes all kinds of things. There's toys. He wants to be tied up. He likes to do things. He likes anal. He likes this. He likes that. His wife doesn't do that because Mm -hmm. she's a virgin Mm -hmm. upon marriage. This is the only penis she's ever seen. So she thinks it's amazing, but she doesn't know how to do any of the things he likes done. Okay. Okay. And they're all foreign to her. Yeah. So when he goes into like, oh, well, let's do anal. She's like, uh, what? I was just a virgin two weeks ago before we got married. Now you want to do all kinds of things to my body. Like she's not, she's not there yet. Mm -hmm. So Sam is going to go out and get somebody who is there already, who can do all the things he likes. And he's into some wild things. Most people are into some pretty freaky shit. Mm-hmm. So now he's cheating on his wife. And now you have a problem. Because now you have a wife who you're married to, obviously. And then there's children. Then there's a house. And there's 50-50. And now there's a divorce court. And now you're losing everything you built. All because you didn't marry the kind of woman you should have married in the first place, which is a woman that's going to knock your socks off every day when you come home from work. Mm. Marry the slut. Marry the slut. Marry the slut. That's a bar. Because you're going to be having awesome sex at home all the time. Mm. You're going to get anal every night. You're going to get head every day. Mm. You'll be teabagging. Mm. You'll be on the chandelier. You'll be in the car, on the beach. You'll be all kinds of shit's going to go down. <laughs> There'll be friends coming. You don't know what, whatever <laughs> kind of escalated. freak you need. Yeah. Marry that person. So you don't have to go outside of your marriage for what you're into. Mm. If you're into multiple partners and and polyamory, marry into that. Don't marry the church marm. Don't marry the virgin. But then you want non-virginal things to happen. That's not fair to her. And it's also a setup for you. You're going to lose everything. Because once you once you get found out that you're out here you know, having sex in cars behind the strip club somewhere doing freaky stuff with the whoever you're going to get your whole life will be taken out from from under you. Mm. Then you're again in divorce court or you're battling for your kids and things like this all because you didn't marry the slut, marry the slut. Mm. That's all I got to say about that. Hope that answers the question. Oh, my goodness. Those calls. What? Those calls. What? So. Pretty normal day, Alex. I mean, it is pretty normal for us. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You said you had a slut shaming situation in the past. Mm-hmm. 
Did this have anything to do with small penis? <laughs> no. Because I think that's the lesson here that I learned. <laughs> Listen, I've seen some small penises and been very, very disgusted. But my, I mean, slut shaming for me was something that I learned about really, really young. And, okay. and I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have learned it this young. But the first person who called me a slut or a whore or a tramp was my mom. That was playing jacks, right? Yeah, because okay. I was playing jacks All with right. the boys. And I didn't understand what that was at the time. Of course, I'm a kid. Yeah. I'm like, I'm playing jacks after school. Um, I've always been a tomboy, so mm. I grew up with a boys. I liked boys better. They weren't, you know, they weren't as petty, you know, or, you know, they were just boys. Just so what play. happened to you now? What? <laughs> <laughs> See, I still like boys. I just don't <laughs> like y'all. Like I just, I just, <laughs> I don't mean? know. Yeah, all right. Um, but my mom called me a slut really early on, and it really shaped the way. It made me very. Once I figured out what a slut was, yeah. that word struck a chord with me, and it made me want to rail against it, even as young as ten, eleven years old. Um, I was raped at thirteen. Oh. I was kidnapped held against my will for three days and raped at 13. Oh, I'm sorry. And then that, that was my first sexual experience. It changed, and so my, my power <clears throat> was taken from me mm. through sex. And, and that's a very powerful statement to a young girl. And I, I see this repeated in a lot of women and in, in, in my life sexually and in a lot of our sexual lives, how much power we give up in our sexuality, how many women are thinking that their sexuality is their power. Um, I've learned that like any, sex is a form of energy. And like any form of energy, sex is more powerful when harnessed um, and, and not given away freely. Hmm. And I've learned that. I think that slut shaming and it took me so many years to figure out what this was. My mother's portrayal, her projection was based on her, her sexual shame. And a lot of men and women are continuing their parents' sexual shame. Hmm. I'm seeing the generational passing down of sexual stigmas. But if you date a whole lot, you're never going to get married. No one's going to want to wife you. You can't turn a hoe into a housewife bullshit. Mm -hmm. When our last, you know, one of our callers said it best is, you know, you want this. You want the hoe. Trust me. You want the hoe in your house. You want to come home and be fed, you know, fed and bedded and like have everything in, in, in house. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go out in the middle of the night for sex? Who wants to, wouldn't it be great if it was just right there? Mm -hmm. You want the girl who's experienced. You want the girl who's been around, who has a sexual education. My mother set off a fire in me at a really young age. Media topped off that image for me of a sexual, strong female archetype. Um, being raped at a young age set off a different fire in me. And I saw how men use sex to control and diminish women. I found that out at 13. Mm. I found that a lot of women are using sex as a, and a lot of women have had the same experiences or similar experiences where they were overly sexualized as young girls, especially black women who develop sooner or more than women of other cultures or any like brown and black women, you know, all tend to kind of develop differently. Mm -hmm. So we're over-sexualized at, at an early age. We tend to have sex earlier and have our, our children sooner in life than other people do. I learned how much sex um, plays a role in our upbringing and in a value, of our, a value and devaluation of ourselves. I've learned a lot about it. I've been called a whore more than I've been called a woman. Wow. Since I was 10 to now in my 40s. Wow. And it doesn't bother me one fucking bit. Really? Not at all. Because if I can survive my mother doing it to me at 10, 11 years old, mm -hmm. if I can survive being raped at 13 years old mm -hmm. and being treated this way at a, as a child by an adult man, if I can survive all of those things, 
what do you think and more what do you think you calling me a whore is gonna do to me Mm. i already had my worst days it took me a lot of years though and a lot of therapy to work through all of these things what sex is um, what my body is, what my choice is, because that was something that I was taken from me a long time ago. Yeah, I think that when we see women having a lot of sex, and men also, and men also, because I know men, I know I know some men who have been sexually traumatized as children who had sex at a super early age, seven, eight, nine years old, grown women having sex with them who are now overly sexualized, who end up having six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 children by six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different women mm. because they're also sexually traumatized. I think that before we start to call out names and to mark people with scarlet letters, we have to start asking questions about why we are so overly sexualized and why we think our, our worth is, in, is between our legs and who taught us that, when they taught us that, and how we break that cycle. Mm-hmm. So I think slut shaming goes a lot deeper than just um, this person has a lot of sex and so I'm calling, it's, it's deeper than that. Why, why are you stigmatizing them and why do you think they deserve to be stigmatized versus asking a question. Why are you like this? Yeah. What happened to you that made you this way? And, and I, it took a lot of years for me to get to that. Everything we do is psychological. And a lot of what we do is based on our traumas, especially as people of color. There's a lot of trauma there. And a lot of that trauma came around before we were even born. Mm-hmm. We're born into trauma. A lot of us are born into traumas. Um, generations worth of traumas. And we're just reenacting those traumas in different ways. So that's why I don't think sluts really exist and hoes don't really exist. I mean, it's a word to use, I think, with big quotations around it. Yeah. Right. So when I say marry the slut, marry the slut. Yeah. Right. But she's a woman who has experience and she's going to keep you more satisfied than probably a woman who doesn't have the experience. Mm. If that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And those are my thoughts. Thank you for sharing your truth. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for listening to Asking for a Friend. I'll be publishing weekly and you can send me questions or comments to askingforafriend at blavity.com. And don't forget, spread the word. Tell a friend. For more Asking for a Friend, like and subscribe to Blavity's YouTube channel. Hold on, I feel like I have an air bubble that's rising. Where is it? Oh, got it. All right. Quiet on the set. Wait, don't know. Right. Leave this part in. We're tired of your small penises. We're tired. <laughs>